In this short video, we're going to talk about quadric surfaces. So what is a quadric surface? It's kind of like the three-dimensional equivalent of a conic section. It's the graph of a second degree polynomial in three variables. The most general form is a handful. It would be ax squared plus by squared plus cz squared. Then come the cross terms, dxy, eyz plus fxz. Then the linear terms, gx plus hy plus iz. And finally, the constant term plus j equals zero. But fortunately, if we apply some rotations or translations to the graph, Really, it's just going to come down to two standard forms. We'll either have only squared terms, which A, B, and C may be positive or negative, and possibly a constant term, non-zero constant term, or I would have two squared terms and one linear term. And so, you know, these are kind of our generic forms. I could have, for example, uh, instead of ax squared plus by squared plus iz, I could have ax squared plus z, z squared plus hy, right? So I could have, it could be linear in y and quadratic in x and z. Now, it is a challenge, and particularly on a tablet, it is a challenge to sketch quadric services without using technology, using it by hand. But the technique is to use traces. What is a trace? Well, a trace is a curve which is found by setting one variable to a constant. So you pick x, y, or z, set it equal to a constant, and then look at the equation that's left over. It'll be a conic section. So remember conic sections are either circles, ellipses, parabolas, or hyperbolas. Or you could actually have a line as kind of a, a degenerate conic section. So we're going to start with uh, maybe one of the simplest ones. Still not going to be easy for me to draw this. Uh, we're going to sketch the graph of the equation x squared plus y squared over 9 plus z squared over 4 equals 1. So if I set z equal to 0, I get this equation, which is an ellipse in the xy plane. So I've done my very best to sketch that ellipse here. If I set y equal to 0, I also get an ellipse, this time in the x, z plane. And in fact, if I put x equal to zero, I get yet another ellipse, this time in the y, z plane. So I don't know if it's clear, but what you get is this egg-shaped or football-shaped uh, bounded um, sol uh, surface here. And it's called an ellipsoid, which makes sense because all of the traces are ellipses. Now, I only chose z equals 0, y equals 0, and x equals 0. But in fact, if I had chosen a different value for uh, z, I would still get another ellipse. But I'm not going to try to attempt to, to draw them. We'll see uh, later on where I've used some technology, uh, the other ellipses. So let's try uh, sketching a couple more. Well, when I say let's, let me try to sketch a couple more. Uh, and these are the most common ones. And they're actually, honestly, some of the easiest ones to sketch. So z equals 4x squared plus y squared. Um, so if I put x equal to 0, I get a parabola, which is going to be in the z, y plane. And if I put y equal to 0 in the zx plane, I get another parabola. It's going to be a skinnier parabola. Uh, and then if I uh, put 
z to be uh, any positive uh, value, right? I can't get a negative value for for uh, z because I have something squared plus something squared um, that can never be smaller than zero. But I'll get an ellipse. So I'll get a parabola here, the z equals y squared parabola in the yz plane. I have another parabola in the xz plane, which is skinnier. And then uh, looking down the z axis, I have ellipses. And so what this turns out to be is kind of a bowl shaped object, bowl shaped surface, uh, where if you look at it from the top, it would be a, an ellipse. But you look at it from the side, uh, it would be a parabola. And so this is called an elliptic paraboloid. Now this one is the most challenging and uh, that's why I actually have the entire grid here to help guide me. Uh, z equals y squared minus x squared. It's a simple equation and the traces are kind of simple. Uh, when x equals zero, I'm going to get a parabola in the uh, yz plane that opens upward. When y equals zero, I'll get a parabola in the xz plane that opens downward. So this is different from what I just saw with the elliptic paraboloid, where both parabolas were opening upward. And then if my value for k can be positive or negative here, but in either case, as long as it's not equal to zero, I get a hyperbola. Now, if k is positive, then uh, my hyperbola uh, is going to have uh, its vertices above the uh, y-axis, right? And if k is negative, it'll be on the x-axis. So there's really kind of two types of hyperbolas depending upon if I am uh, above the xy plane or below, if z is positive or z is negative. So, okay, the parabola, that's easy enough to sketch. The other parabola, it's also pretty easy to sketch. And then kind of on the tips of those parabolas, I have these hyperbolas. So I have hyperbolas that open up along the x-axis below the uh, xy plane and above the xy plane where z is positive, uh, they open along the y axis. And so um, trying to connect these together to make a picture which is reasonable uh, is a little bit challenging. Uh, but what this is supposed to look like is what we call a saddle point. So it kind of looks like a saddle that the saddle comes, it arches this way when I look at it uh, down the x-axis, but if I look at it down the y-axis, it has an arch that goes like that, just like a saddle. And um, because we have these uh, hyperbolas and parabolas, this is called a hyperbolic paraboloid. Hyperbolic paraboloid. So um, there are, in general, six types of quadric surfaces. So um, the first one that we looked at already is the ellipsoid. So I use some technology to draw it here. And you can see it has this kind of egg shape and uh, all of the traces are ellipses. And um, we saw the elliptic paraboloid. It's this bowl shaped, which looks like an ellipse from the top and a parabola when you look at it from the side. And notice that for both of these, for the first one, every term is squared and it can equal a constant in which you can make equal to one. Here with the elliptic paraboloid, you have two squared terms, one term that is not squared. Now in the elliptic paraboloid, 
both the squared terms are positive. If you have one positive and one negative and the third term is not squared, you get that higher hyperbolic paraboloid. And maybe this is a little bit better picture of what, what we're looking at. So we have the parabola here. We have another parabola going up and over along the uh, x-axis. And then there are hyperbolas kind of attached to the top of it and then to the bottom parabola as well. Now, if we have uh, something that can be solved for this, where you'd have two x squared, I mean, two squared terms on one side and a third term, or you could be solving this and said, uh, get z equals radical x squared plus y squared. That would only be half of the cone. But with the, the z squared, you get the plus and the minus. So you get the bottom cone and the top cone. Um, here now is something that we didn't uh, sketch either. Here we have, again, a constant. So it kind of looks like the ellipsoid, except for uh, one of the terms is subtracted. And what you get here is a hyperboloid of one sheet. Um, cooling towers uh, are often uh, made in the shape of hyperboloids. Uh, for uh, facilitation of the cooling. And then if I have all squared terms equaling one, but two of them are negative, then you get a hyperboloid of two sheets. So now you get like two bowls. Uh, so looking at it from the top, in this particular case would be a hyperbola, or from the side would be a hyperbola. But looking at it from the end uh, would be, um, any lips. So it is very challenging to look at these, but we should be familiar with at least have a picture in our mind of what is an ellipsoid. If I tell you that something is represents an ellipsoid, then you should know, oh, okay, that is a bounded surface. Looks like a squashed sphere or an egg or a, a uh, football-like shape. If we're talking about an elliptic paraboloid, then you know that is a bowl. And it could be opening upward or opening downward, just like a, a parabola does. If we talk about a hyperbolic paraboloid, then we know that we have something that kind of looks like a saddle. Uh, a cone, we already know what it looks like, but uh, now we, we should be able to recognize the equation there. And quite frankly, the hyperboloids are, it's very rare to, to, to uh, come across them in examples, but they do occur. So, but they're just simply less common. Uh, but I will not ask you to uh, draw these, but what I may do is uh, give you a matching question. If I were to give you these pictures and then I were to give you the names, could you match the names to the, to the, the particular pictures? I will not ask you to memorize these equations. All right, well, I hope that you found this useful. We will be referencing these surfaces throughout the course.